Hey guys, um, pre-AP Biology. I just wanted to make a quick video uh, kind of going through uh, some of the more missed questions on the final exam. Um, so some of you might be wondering what you missed and um, you know, I'm not going to open that up completely yet because I have some kids that uh, there's some kids in other classes that haven't quite taken it yet. So uh, I'm just going to go over some of the some of the statistics here on the test, and then we'll go over some of the, again, most commonly missed uh, questions. So we averaged uh, an 83%, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, our low score was a 55. Our high score was a 100. And if you kind of look at the bar graph here, you can kind of see the breakdown uh, of A's, B's, C's, D's, and F's. So we had a lot of kids up here in the A, B range. Did not have a lot of kids in the DF range. I didn't expect to have a whole bunch of kids there. But if you were in that DF range, then obviously there's a reason for that. And you probably know some of those reasons. So I don't have to spend a lot of time going over that with you. Um, but just kind of going through, again, some of these questions. Um, let's see here. Number seven kind of stood out a little bit. Uh, this one dealt with the, I'm going to go back to it here. There was a uh, set of questions about, um, oops, where was it? Here it was. It was about plants and photosynthesizing. And, and basically all this question was asking us was, you know, what gas is produced by Elodea, which is a plant? You know, 78% um, of us, you know, picked oxygen, which is correct. But I'm a little bit concerned because 22% of us did not know that plants produce oxygen gas. All right. I mean, really, that's, I don't know, fifth grade science, maybe. I don't know. Um, but if, we're, if we didn't choose that, that answer, um, we need to make sure in the future we do not make that mistake again. Because uh, if you want to take more biology down the road, um, you have to fundamentally understand that, that um, again, plants produce uh, oxygen. Uh, another question that a lot of people missed was number eight. Uh, this one, again, um, goes back to this, this graph uh, that was, you know, about this experiment with these LODA plants and, and gases or the, you know, the gas that they produce, which is obviously oxygen. Um, it says here, suppose when the lamp was 60 centimeters from the LOD. So looking at this graph, here's 60 centimeters, right? This is this this axis here shows us the distance. So the question says, you know, the students measured the volume of gas produced during a period of eight hours. Based on the figure, the volume of gas produced was most likely closest to which of the following now the key here is eight hours because if you look at the graph this is gas production per one hour so if you look at the 60 centimeter distance and go to the point here and this is go over here it's obviously about three <clears throat> three milliliters per hour but if it was eight hours you would have to multiply that by eight so then we just pick the answer that is closest to 24, right? So, you know, because it says here, based on the figure, the volume of gas produced was most likely closest to which of the following. So we would just have to pick the number that is closest to 24. In this case, it would be 25. All right. So, you know, the key there to that was the eight hour part. Uh, I would say that that was probably, you know, um, kind of an AP style. Uh, question set. But if you got those right, that means that you can interpret a graph correctly, interpret uh, data correctly, which is a good thing. All right. Um, number 11. You know, some of us just missed the um, different types of symbiosis. You know, uh, population of cheetahs used, utilizing limited shade. That would have been competition. Uh, the clownfish hiding from predators 
you know, within the sea anemone, that would have been mutualism. Um, species of snail sheds its sh uh, shell every six months. Hermit crabs then use the discarded shell. That would be commensalism. Then, of course, ticks burrowing. That would be uh, parasitism. But, you know, I made that an all or nothing. You know, in my opinion, you know, you, you got to know those different things. If you missed any part of that, you didn't deserve the point. So, um, again, you know, some of us got that right. Some of us did not. Number 15, this was a 50 percenter, one of the most missed questions uh, on the test. So this was nitrogen cycle. What groups of organisms make it possible for atmospheric nitrogen to be converted to a usable form so that other living things can use it? I mean, if you know anything about the nitrogen cycle, then you know that bacteria play a huge role. Right, those organisms are what fixes nitrogen and makes it usable for other living things. So if you didn't choose bacteria, you didn't watch my lecture video, and you didn't pay much attention to that particular cycle. So shame on you if you didn't do that. But bacteria is the correct answer. My kids are laughing at me. Anyway, number 23. This was an isotope question. Um you know, it kind of gives you a description here of what isotopes are. You know, phosphorus isotopes, phosphorus 32 and 33. Um, it says phosphorus 33 has an atomic number of 15. How many neutrons does phosphorus 33 have? So the 33, that's the, that's the uh, mass number. You know, that's the number of protons and neutrons. So all you have to do is just take 33 minus 15, because 15 is the protons. So 33 minus 15 should give you 18, which is the number of neutrons. Uh, let's see here, 25. You know, this is just bonding. I told you guys I was kind of worried about the chemistry type of questions. And I think I was right. We definitely missed a few of these. Um, this is definitely an ionic bond. This is where, when one electron gets transferred to another atom. Uh, that's what an ionic bond is all about. So again, if you just watch my videos, you probably understood that. Uh, number 36, I could not believe that we've, so many, so many people missed this. Which formula represents an organic molecule? Now, I think what probably happened here was people probably thought, well, you know, th this isn't exactly organic because, you know, carbohydrates, right, are, you know, a one to two to one ratio. And, you know, maybe that's what threw you off. Yeah, that, that's true. Carbohydrates are a one to two to one ratio. But organic compounds have carbon. That's it, right? They have carbon. They are carbon-based compounds. Look at this thing, choice number number one. There's no carbon in that. It is not organic. AgNO3, there's no carbon. It can't be organic. 67% of you chose water. H2O, is there carbon in water? No, it is not organic. The only answer that this could have been is C12H22O11, which I know does not fit the criteria for being a carbohydrate, but carbohydrates are not the only types of organic compounds. There's millions of organic compounds out there. If they have carbon bonded to other carbon atoms, which this definitely does, then it would be an organic molecule. So I was really surprised that so many people miss it. But again, it goes back to what I said earlier. You know, if you didn't pay attention to that unit, if you didn't watch my lecture videos because you were too busy doing other things like playing video games or watching Netflix or whatever it is you young whippersnappers do, um, you probably missed this. So 67% of you, that probably held true. Anyway, number 29. Oh, this one. You know, I noticed that we uh, we missed a lot of these on the homework. 
Uh, we missed a lot of these on the review. Um, but here, here's probably why you missed this. You just looked at these numbers and said, oh, well, you know, 80, that's greater than 10. So water must be moving in. And that must mean that the cell's going to get bigger. And, you know, that's probably why 30% of you chose hypotonic environment. But you got to remember here, you got to read this. It says the membrane is permeable to water, but not to glucose. These are solutions. You know, on the inside of this bag, this cell, whatever, you know, this represents, is 10% glucose, but that means it's 90% water. So there's 90% water on the inside of this bag. On the outside, which is 80% glucose, there's 20% water. Yes, I didn't put that on there. I tried to trick you. Not really. I mean, it's kind of obvious if you just watch the lecture videos and, and, and listen to what I tell you. So basically, we've got 20% water on the outside. You got 90% water on the inside. Water moves from high to low. So that water is going to move out of the bag or out of the cell. The cell is going to shrivel. This is a hyper tonic environment all right 39 percent. that was kind of disheartening all right moving on eh, we did good on all these questions look at all these easy ones that i gave you wow 100 percent of them oh no 96 uh 38 only oh my god only 57 percent of us got this right diploid and haploid an organism has 40 chromosomes in its brain cells what is the diploid number of this organism? There's basically two general types of cells, right? You've got somatic cells, which are like your body cells, right? Blood cells, brain cells, liver cells, whatever. And then you've got gametes. You've got sex cells, right? Which are sperm or egg. Well, a brain cell, in fact, all somatic cells, contain the diploid number so if there's 40 organ if there's 40 chromosomes in this organism's brain cells the diploid number is 40 57 percent of you got that right i thought this was one of the easiest questions on the entire test but 43 percent of you got that wrong so you might need to go back and figure out the difference between diploid and haploid, somatic cells and gametes. Again, watch my lecture videos, pay attention. Some of you are not doing that. You know, even though, oh, wait, one more question, 39. Karyotype, uh, what does it represent here? So first of all, male or female? Those of you that chose female, you need to figure something out, okay? It's XY for male, XX for female. So this is definitely a, a male. Um, you got three chromosome 21s, so that means Down syndrome. All right, so this should have been a male with Down syndrome. So I don't know, like, I'm going to go back to this real quick, and I see this 83%. You know, after going over those questions that were the most commonly missed ones, I think this test should have been an A average. I really do. You know, um, some of you guys, I think, need to put forth a little bit better of an effort, but I'm actually kind of disappointed that it's an 83. You know, other teachers might be ecstatic, but, you know, you guys are honor students. I actually think this is kind of a disappointment. You know, some of you guys got really good scores on this, and, you know, that's great, but I don't know. I think we could have done better overall. So if you miss some of those questions, you know, hopefully down the road you won't miss them again. But um, some of those were kind of easy, kind of softball questions that you guys should have hit out of the ballpark. But for whatever reason, we did. All right, guys, that's it for me for today. I uh, just so want to go over that with you. I will see you soon. Take care.